Ladies, gentlemen, and others, welcome back to Boz Comics. Now, on this channel, and in this community in general, uh, there has long been a lot of well-deserved criticism directed towards uh, the big two, uh, Marvel and DC Comics for the uninitiated. There's also been a lot of criticism from myself and some of my peers uh, directed towards the alternative, you know, uh, Comicsgate and those who are Comicsgate adjacent. Uh, the whole uh, new era of comics, this whole like crowdfunding uh, cabal we've kind of uh, seen built around ourselves. It's it's there's a lot of infighting going on right now. There's a lot. Of, we're past growing pains. There's just a lot of clashing personalities, a lot of drama. It's icky. It's disgusting. I did a whole video uh, on it not too long ago, but uh, I'm not going to rehash all that here. But the fact remains, like, there's a lot of negativity going on, you know, all around. And while I am not ever going to be somebody who says that we all need to be nothing but uh, pure love and light, in fact, I think that uh, people who say as much are very often the worst kind of people, which is something I honestly find fascinating, but that's neither here nor there. Um, while I will never be one of those people, I, I do really want to make an effort on my part to, uh, while I will never shy away from criticizing things that I see and, and voicing my feelings and opinions, that's still always going to be a big part of this channel, I do want to make an effort to bring in more positivity in addition to what's already here. I, I want to talk about things that I love. Uh, it felt really good to espouse the awesome virtues of Ghost Rider number one the other day. So today, I would like to preach to you <laughs> about why you should be reading uh, Chip Zdarsky's run on Daredevil. Now, everyone who's anyone knows who Daredevil is. I never thought I would see the day where I could say that and, and mean it uh, unironically, but the Netflix show was a huge hit and was canceled too soon. So everybody knows who Daredevil is. Uh, Matt Murdock, blind lawyer, fights crime. Uh, and his most recent run, done by Chip Zdarsky with primary art by uh, Mark Cicchetto, I believe, has been nothing short of amazing. Um, and it's it's pretty interesting for, for one key thing, and that's that Daredevil is barely in it. <laughs> now, when I say Daredevil is barely in it, that's, that's a bit of a, a cheeky statement. Matt Murdock is in every issue. This is, so far, this has been a slow burn Matt Murdock book um, before it's been anything else. Um, so in order to really kind of talk about why this run is so awesome, I'm going to have to spoil the first couple of issues uh, to a certain extent and say that in those early issues, Matt fucks up in a big bad way and accidentally kills a bad guy. And... Matt, having been, uh, oh, it's, it's worth noting that he, uh, starts the run, uh, at like a third of his peak efficiency. Um, he, I think got like hit by a truck in the previous run. I'm not quite sure. I honestly fell out off it after the first dozen or so issues, but he got like fucked up real good. He lost his confidence. He, uh, got fucked physically just utterly wrecked um so he's 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 hurting he he's literally hurting he's popping painkillers uh he is half the man he used to be but he keeps trying to be daredevil and in like the second or third issue fucks up in a big way and somebody dies a scumbag but still if you know anything about daredevil he's all about that catholic guilt he is not about the taking of lives at least not you know by his own hand um and so it's it's a real crisis for him. It's a crisis of morality. It's it's a crisis of faith. And after a heart to heart from uh, another Marvel uh, superhero, uh, Matt kind of decides that he needs to step back from being Daredevil. He if he's going to make mistakes like this, he he can't be Daredevil anymore. So the majority of of the first twelve issues so far have been Matt 
trying to find a way to still serve justice, still maintain and fight for his ideals while keeping the mask under lock and key. Um, all the while, though, he's being pursued by a passionate cop who is also uh, dealing with a, a sort of crisis of faith, if you will. Um, and we get lots of cool examinations of the idea of vigilantism versus police corruption through the eyes of this cop. Um, while that's going on, uh, we get kind of different moral dilemmas as Matt becomes entangled with this bookstore owner who also happens to have married in to a notorious crime family. While that's going on, we also get a, a new look at Wilson Fisk, who you'll know uh, from the Netflix show as being portrayed brilliantly by uh, Vincent D'Onofrio, Vanessa. Now, I, I, mock, I mock his peculiar way of speaking, but I love that uh, portrayal. Real talk. He's one of the things I miss most about that show. But um, so we get a, a new look, a new take on the Kingpin that I absolutely love. Kingpin's kind of trying to go straight. Like, he's he's going through his own crisis because he's trying to get away from crime and start fresh as a legitimate businessman. And you get to kind of follow that plot line as well and, and see how well that's working out. Um, there's more that's really awesome that I, I, I won't spoil, but it's just, it's so good. It's been a while, I feel, since we've had like a really good, solid... Um, respectful and believable character study of Matt Murdock. Um, and this, if it were, if it weren't for the occasional cameo, I could almost forget that this happens within the confines of the Marvel universe, because this feels by and large, like very gritty, very real. The fight scenes in this, uh, when they do happen, because even when Matt gives up the costume, he, he can't stay away from, uh, from a brawl or two. Of course, right? It's a comic book. It's a superhero comic, no less. What do you expect? But the fights, when they do happen, they're they're insane. They're hard-hitting. They're brutal. They're like something out of a Netflix show. This really does feel heavily inspired in the best fucking way by the Netflix shows. Um, and <laughs> this, this comic also seems to understand how to do decompressed storytelling much better than most of the Netflix shows. Go figure. But... Uh, it's it's just so good. You really get to examine uh, Matt as a person. Uh, if you like seeing the life and times of a broken ninja trying to rediscover his purpose in life, if that's if that's a concept which appeals to you, this is this is the book for you. This this is the book that you need to be reading. Marvel is still capable of producing great books they're few and far between they're not the majority and they fucking should be marvel has certainly pulled a um, social justice motivated bit of an icarus move and uh flown too close to the sun and they're they're paying for it with sales and steady decline and you know increasingly alienated readership but daredevil is one of the examples of just how great Marvel can still be. This this is a book that uh that you really need to read. And honestly, if you've never read Daredevil before, this is this run is is a great time to get in on it. I believe the first trade is already out. So for like 12 to 20 dollars somewhere in there, I don't know. I'm probably like 14 bucks. You can buy the first 6 issues all in one go, sit down, read them. So good. It's so good. You don't need to know anything about Daredevil's history. You, you, you will get everything you need as you go. And it's, it's just such a good read. The one thing I will criticize is that um, Chichetto is only around for half the book. Uh, he takes a couple of breaks, or maybe it's just one break. I don't remember. But there's like a stretch of the book where he's not present. And the artist that they pick up not my favorite it's definitely not the worst that modern marvel has to offer but going from chichetto's awesome work to the villain guy it's a little jarring so that's disappointing 
Um, but that's my only complaint about this fucking book. Uh, the one thing I will say is that if you want like nonstop superhero action, you're you're not gonna get it. <laughs> like again, this is a slow burn. These twelve issues so far, and I don't know how soon that's going to abate, or if it's going to abate. Um, but I will say that I like slower paced storytelling. I feel like this is going to read amazing in trade. Um, once I'm liquid again, I, I will be picking up the first trade for myself. I've only been reading it in single issues. I, I've got to get the trades because this is something I want to be able to go back to and reflect on because the storytelling is, is just that good. It's just that good. Um, you know, uh, meeting Mandy, that woman that Matt, uh, becomes entangled with is really, uh, she's an interesting addition to the cast. You get to meet all these people that Matt interacts with in his new, profession as a probation officer which is a really kind of an interesting turn for uh, dd that's not been done before um like i said it's a new take on the kingpin that's really cool um the book has lots of interesting things to say about cops and about vigilantes um and you know if you're like me and you really hate all these like all cops are bastards people like don't worry it's not that it it takes a look at police corruption but it also acknowledges that good cops do exist and and not all cops are monsters um and kind of uses um the marvel universe to say some interesting things about it really i'm just i'm just i'm just i'm just spewing praises at this point this book is just so good and i love it so much and i i want it to keep being successful chip sadarsky used to kind of be a joke you know, I really hated his early stuff when he was working on uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, but after a while, he got, like, the bad stories out of his system, I guess, because I haven't read anything bad from him in a couple of years now. He he has gone from being somebody that would make me facepalm to being an instant buy for me. I see Chip Sidarsky now, and it is now uh, synonymous for me with quality storytelling. And Daredevil is no exception. So, I'm not going to belabor the point any further. Please do yourselves a favor. Go out and buy this book. Make it make it a rip-roaring success. Show Marvel that we want quality, you know, uh, superhero storytelling. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Go read Daredevil.